These are randomly generated NHL players and I will be selecting 20 of them to build a team. For today's challenge, I will only be able to see the career point totals for each player. When all the picks have been made, we will assemble the team on NHL 24 and simulate franchise mode with the hopes of winning a Stanley Cup. All right, so let's get our first set of players here. We have a pretty close race between 382 and 311, but it really depends on how many games they played, which we don't know. For whatever reason, the 311 is speaking to me. So let's go with the left. Well, it was probably speaking to me because we drafted him last time. Not the most fire start in the world, but we'll make it work. Next up, we have 41, 248, and 94. See, the thing is the 94 could be in like 70 games, but I think I'd be a donkey to not go with the middle card 248. Ah, very interesting. We get Chris Tierney. We haven't seen any super large numbers yet. 431 and 442 are so close again. I went with the lower one last time, didn't work out. We're going with 442. I am so happy that we did that. We missed out on Tyler Johnson, but we get a Matthew Barzell. Yes, please. I'm pretty sure every player we have so far is a centerman. We get three fire players right here. And you know what? For whatever reason, 491 caught my attention. I'm getting so lucky right now. We get Jake and Bake, Jake Gensel, no longer a jerk, aka a hurricane. We somehow managed to avoid Leller and Brock Nelson. I probably just used up all the luck I have for the rest of the video. This one is a clear cut choice. I mean, come on now. 567 it is. I'm hoping we make the playoffs because we're not going to get to use this player until then. We got Mark Stone. Love to see it. Let's keep it rolling. 788. Yeah, I mean, I have to go with them. You can't not go with a player with that many points. Honestly, not really what I was expecting. Another centerman, but Tyler Sagan is definitely a solid player. Very close to 500. You couldn't quite get there, eh? You know what? Screw it. We're going risky. Give me 266. Uh, you know what? I'm okay with that. We get Jake DeBrusque. We missed out on Couturier, who's probably the higher overall. It is what it is. Tree Turdy, 450 and 553. Let's go back to the host with the most, and we're gonna go with the card on the right. Yes, sir. We are getting all kinds of lucky today, and I am here for it. Welcome aboard the squadron, Braden Point. I am gonna try to mix in a few rounds without the filter for the top 250 players. Okay. See, this is why I don't leave it off all the time, because it could be anybody. They could have one game played last season. I guess we go with 82 points and hope they've played 82 games a very interesting set of players indeed he's probably the highest overall out of the three so Yakov Trenin was the way to go I am just assuming however and you know what they say about assuming we've got one more line of forwards to draft here 717 is an easy choice I can't lie to you I almost wish I took the least amount of points Lafreniere would have been completely fire but we get Mark Shifley solid player definitely gonna have some ability sprinkled in there our penultimate forward is most likely gonna have 809 points or should I yeah, I'm going to. And once again, although a very good player, not the best one on the board. We could have had Jimmy Stu with 247 points, but we get a Matt Duchesne. Who will be our final forward? 342 or one point? Absolutely not. Let's go for a strike, hit the middle pin, 342. I think this player could use a change of scenery. We're getting PLD on the squad. That is our final forward. Now it's time for defenders. Give me EK65. He will definitely be up there. I'm going to take 146. And on top of that, I'm not going to regret it. We get Zadorov. He is a unit. Defender number two. 150? No. 742. Easiest pick of my entire life. I knew it had to be somebody great. And it is. Chris Letang is joining our squadron. We actually got really lucky there because we could have been done completely dirty like this. Maybe they're just kind of stay-at-home defensemen. Not going with eight points. Well, that is Ovi's number. And as you guys probably know by now, he is my boy. But instead, I'm gonna slap a five in front of his number and go down the middle. I'm actually not upset with that. Lilligren could have been really cool, but Anderson is probably kind of the same overall. I think. Or he's probably not, and I'm just going to be entirely wrong. 49 whole points. That is impressive. It's 49 more than I'll ever have. We're going down the mid-ski again. 135 points. I'm actually so upset right now. I mean, great defenseman in Matt Grizzlick, but we could have had Luke Hughes. That would have been unreal. If you asked me to spell Grizzlick, I might faint. 11 points, 14 points, and 10 points. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not really sure we can win here. Let's go for 10 points. Why not? Why do I keep forgetting that guy's first name? Is it Keegan? Oh, it's Caden, right. All right, well, maybe I'll remember next time. Either way, we got chicken on a Kaiser. Our final defenseman and our final not goaltender. This has just been something else. We're gonna go for 30 points. I couldn't tell you what any of these players overalls are. Justin Barron is our final player. Now the important question, who is going to be tending the goal? Call me crazy but I'm going for the 910 instead of the 912. I must have eaten Lucky Charms or something. We get John Gibson. Last and hopefully not least, 916 is the absolute easiest pick, even easier than the one before. Well, same ballpark, you know what I mean? Obviously, we're going down the middle. You actually love to see it. We get Frederick Anderson. I don't know if this team is gonna have what it takes. We do have some offensive firepower for sure. Defense are pretty solid. We do have Latang in there. Goaltending's all right. Let's head on over and find out. Here we are on NHL 24 with the divisions jumbled up a little bit, a custom franchise mode, and the Phoenix Pirates are here in custom division 2 at 91 overall. Ah yes, jabroni. A tale as old as time. We are going to be, I believe, the first team to ever have a European AHL affiliate. I would be shocked if that has been a thing in the past. Honestly, same with the future because of travel. They might do a few exhibition games out there, but they definitely aren't planting a team. Well, I shouldn't say never. Our team was $14 million over the cap, but we have an expert on our team. I have now simulated up to the regular season. Let's see what the chemistry is all about with this team. The Phoenix Pirates are going to have a plus five on the first line. Beautiful. What's up with Mark Stone being on the third one, though? All right, so I was able to cook up a little bit here, but I'm still questioning why Sagan is on the fourth line. Let's go ahead and move him up, and then we get a plus two. That's beautiful. We do have two snipers on the first line, which I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Barzell's a playmaker, so I kind of want to move him up here so that we have a two-way forward playmaker sniper. Sounds good to me. And then our second line can have two snipers on the wings with Shifley playmaking in the middle. Defense, I'm a little bit worried for, but we have to check. I was worried for no reason. 1-2-0, baby. And in fact, I'm gonna go even more crazy by moving Zadorov up. We get a plus three and then a plus two. In net, we have Freddie Anderson backed up by John Gibson. Let's say that Jake and Bake gets the most points with 95 and the team gets 44 wins playoff bound. All right, starting off 2-0. Let's go. Heading into December, we're doing all right, but we're not doing good. Actually, we're not even doing all right anymore. What's going on? All right, fine. We'll do best lines because apparently having less chemistry is good. So I do best lines. We win five games in a row, of course, but it's all right because then we go and lose five in a row. Great simulation engine. We're really not going to make the playoffs. That is astounding. I'm changing up the lines a bit again here. I don't know if it's going to do anything. Probably not. The stats will be very telling so we can see if it was more of a goaltending problem if we weren't getting any offense. Will there be any blockbuster trades to report? No, but Mike Riley is available. Going to go ahead and decline. This team has been a roller coaster of emotions. When we initially drafted them, I was like, no, probably not. And then I saw our chemistry was actually clear and I had some hope and now we suck. Well, we're not in the playoffs and on top of that, it's not a fantasy draft. So it's just the regular rosters. I'm gonna go ahead and sim the playoffs. It's not even like there was any blockbuster trades to report on because we didn't see any at the trade deadline. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue simming. It is a game seven. Who's gonna take it home? It is the Flow Rider Panthers with the Barracuda getting the Calder. For whatever reason, the Phoenix Pirates just could not get it going. Our goals for per game was considered average in the division. Goals against per game, same thing. Power play percentage was a little bit lower than I would like it to be. For some reason, I thought our penalty kill would be bad, but it was actually all right. Holy, we sucked at home. On the road, we were decent. The Toronto Maple Leafs are your President's Trophy winners with 113 points, 52 wins on the year. 18th place Carolina Hurricanes managed to get in, but we've definitely seen worse, so 18's not that bad. I guess offense was the issue. We had 89 points from Mark Stone, but then only 68 from Jake and Bag, 66 from Braden Point. That doesn't make sense to me. The math is in fact not mathing. Barzell only had 57 points. And we've got three players right here that are dash 12. Actually, our goaltending was pretty mid too. 904 save percentage, 906. Look at this record. 
That's awful. Both goaltenders above a three GAA as well. And clearly Chris Letang was the only defenseman that actually did anything. Ilya Sorokin and Stewie Decimal System both had 40 wins on the year, but Sorokin had a 914 save percentage, 276. Technically Stewie's GAA was better. But the 920 down here for Markstrom, probably gonna bring in some hardware. Pretty solid year for defensemen. Roman Yossi, one shy of 100. And then we got Quinn Hughes, 95. Makar, 83. Miro had 80. Your Art Ross, and by the looks of it, Rocket Richard winner is going to be Pappy. A plus 52. Must be nice. And he had 121 points. Cooch was so close, but he lost the Rocket Richard race by one goal. All three goaltenders at the top here have insane stats. A 921, then a 926, and a 934 for Stewie. Gustav Forsling had 18 points. Miro was nearly point a game. Bouchard was point a game. So was Adam Fox down here. Jack Hughes gonna get snubbed of the con Smythe. He had 30 points in just 22 games. I guess he was a dash one, but Reinhardt most likely going to be the recipient. He's going to clean up, isn't he? The Art Hart combo goes to Matthews. Quinn Hughes with the Norris. Understandable. But also, Yossi had four more points. I guess that doesn't always matter. Lady Bang goes to Matthews. Bedard gets the Calder Memorial. Reinhardt did, in fact, get the Conn Smythe. Ingram secures the Vesna, and the Jennings goes to Sorokin. So nothing for Markstrom. Scandella is awarded the Bill Masterton, whereas the Jack Adams is awarded to Owens. Sydney the Kidney gets the Selkie, and then we got two more trophies for Pappy. Jadies and Lentleman, here's your playoff tree. Unfortunately, we were not a part of that. I feel like we should have been. But say la vie. I appreciate you as always. If you could leave a like, subscribe, and turn that bell on, that would be fire and I would appreciate you. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to get the points thing to work on the website that I use to draft the team. That's in the description, by the way. For now, I'm just making local changes and then running the app locally so that I can do these. And on that note, I'll see you soon.